Good afternoon, everyone. Sorry, I'm five minutes late. How's it going? Gertie and Barbara McKelly, welcome. How are you ladies doing today? Hey, hey, hope you guys are doing well. It's a little bit of a rainy day here in Vancouver. Alan, Alan, hello. Najmadin, hello from Kurdistan. Maya. Michaela, you had a cold, but good to hear you're better now. I had a cold a few weeks ago myself. Feels good when it passes. Makes you appreciate your health, eh? Um, so, good to see you guys in the chat. Uh, we're going to get started. Today we're going to continue and finish off with phrasal verbs, okay? Um, last week we didn't quite finish um, with the smart information. So we're going to go through the rest of that and we'll also talk about some more of the trickier phrasal verbs. Okay. Um, so yeah, and just to let you know, today is the last of the Unit 12 grammar point. Um, and then the plan is I'm going to go back to the, the, the beginning of the unit one and but this time going through we're going to focus on doing a lot of these smart exercises together on the chats. Okay, so if that is something that interests you, uh, you are welcome to continue on and um, keep practicing with me. Okay. Edwin from Dominican, nice. And Sergi, yes, lolly lolly. I do not see her. That is very strange. Hopefully, she'll be joining us. <laughs> ah, there she is. Speak of the devil. <laughs> this is a saying, uh, an expression that we use when we are talking about somebody and then they enter the room. Um, we say, oh, speak of the devil. Even though it's nothing to do with the devil, it's just an expression. Lolly, good to see you there. And yeah, all right, let's get started. I'm going to change over the display. Here we go. So everyone can hear me and see me well, no problems there. Diego, hello in Rio de Janeiro. Riveringot, hello there. Good, okay, nice to have a good group in the chat. All right, so I'm going to make this a little bit bigger here. And this is where we left off um, last Tuesday, okay? So we are talking about phrasal verbs, okay? Um, I do have a new document here, and this is review. I will have this in the chat, okay? So always feel free to review that. Um, and yeah, so let's continue. Uh, we're talking about phrasal verbs and now using the verb get with particles like on and off. And let's see, Yusuf, I am sorry but I'm not sure about Karim's Arabic stream. I'm not quite sure what's going on with that. Um, he could be just taking a break, he might be on vacation, but sorry if I'm not so sure. I can ask and find out for you, but um, yeah, I'm not sure where he is. Life of science, it's bedtime there. Okay, well, hopefully you'll be able to stay awake for this hour. We'll see what happens. Um, so, phrasal verbs with the verb get, with on and off. We often use these for large vehicles. Um, oh, we did go over this, didn't we? I remember now. Um, but not for cars. With cars we say get in, okay? Larger vehicles get on or get off, okay? Um, but let's go and talk about the difference between on and onto and off and off of, okay? Um, if we're talking without an object, with no object, um, we don't need to use onto, just on. Like, hey, oh, there's our bus, let's get on. Just that, no object. Um, but if you want to include an object, you do need to change the particle to onto because now you're actually referring to what you are getting onto the bus, okay? Um, 
do you want to, for example, do you want to walk? No, let's get onto the bus. Okay. Hello, Abdel Mahamid. <laughs> and hello, I'm not sure what your name is underneath that. And it's the same with off. Okay, you know, like here's our stop, let's get off. Um, but if you want to mention the bus, you do need to use the part, uh, preposition of. Okay. Um, let's get off. Let's get off of the bus. Okay. Abdo. Perfect. That's much easier for me. Abdo. Thank you. Long. Welcome. Yeah, if you ever have a name that I completely mispronounce, feel free to tell me a, a good nickname that you have that's easier. <laughs> All right. So, other phrasal verbs with on. Saeed, would you please say an, a get to means having an opportunity. Uh, oh, yes. Um, so, I'm, for example, I'm happy that I will finally get to visit that country, for example. Um, and it's not a phrasal verb, it's just the verb get with infinitive, okay? Um, so, for example, I hope I get to try the dinner at the party. Or, she finally gets to visit Paris. She's very excited. Okay. Um, how often do you get to travel? Okay. So I hope that helps. Um, Najmadin, yes, grammar is quite dry, not the most exciting thing to study, that's for sure. Um, I think without grammar it's difficult to have good, proper English, but many people get by without studying English, uh, sorry, grammar, uh, but definitely it's important. You need a full lesson with using get. Yeah, it is a pretty common uh, verb, that's for sure. Um, we use it for getting married, too, like when did you get married? Um, or in the morning you need to get dressed, um, get onto the bus, uh, get in shape, okay? It's often followed by an adjective. Gertie, on, onto is similar, used in, into. Yeah, it's the same. It's whether you have an object or not. Like, here's the bus, let's get on. Here's the car, let's get in. Or, let's get onto the bus now. Or, let's get into the car now. So it depends if you use the car or not. Okay, and yes, you can say get into the car. Yeah. Naif. Okay, hopefully I'm saying that right. Naif or knife. Naif or knife? I'm not sure. <laughs> so, um, looking at some of these phrasal verbs, go on means to happen or to continue with no object. Okay? So, for example, here in this first example, it means what's happening. Okay? So, um, yes, so Abdo, you can definitely use jump into the car. Yeah, and some people say, you know, they pull up in their car, they're driving, and they're saying, hey, you know, jump in. I'll give you a ride to your school. Jump in means get in. It's a more casual, of course, casual way. Hi, Imad. <laughs> okay, so in this case, what's going on for your birthday this year means what's happening, okay? We often use this for asking about plans, you know, or, you know, what's going on this weekend? I want to do something fun. Um, what's going on here? It could be, you know, a parent going into their child's room, like, what's happening? What are you doing? What's going on here? Um, what's going on for Christmas? Meaning, what are the plans? Okay. Um, both car and bus is a vehicle, so that's because uh, bus we use on because it's a large, large vehicle. 
Um, but car, we say in because it's a smaller vehicle. Bus, you can walk straight on and you don't have to like crouch. Um, whereas in a car, you have to kind of bend into the car, get into the car. You have to bend your body. With a bus, you don't have to bend your body generally. That could be a difference. Megana, welcome. Said, going on with is the same as for. Mm, no, I don't think so, but if you could give me um, an example, I can verify. King Care, if someone speaking to me makes grammar mistakes, generally I can probably understand them, definitely, but um, I might be tempted to correct their grammar. Um, I think grammar is very important. If your goal is to speak the language fluently and correctly, it's just part of the process to study the grammar. Yeah. Um, what's going on for your party is a little bit different than saying what's going on with your party. Um, because if you say what's going on with your party, it might mean that you think there is a problem with the party, okay? Whereas what's going on for your party, it means you want to know what they are going to do for their party. So with the, it does change things a little bit. It's very difficult um, for second language speakers, but it is a little bit different to say what's going on for and what's going on with. If you say what's going on with your party, you, you think that there are problems with the party, okay? Um, for example, what's going on with your parents? So you think there are problems with your parents. Um, but what's going on for your parents' anniversary? You want to know what the party is, what's going to happen, okay? Um, yeah, so next comment. The bus is big enough to say, go to a board. Um, we, would, we would just say, Sergey, board the bus. Board the bus. Um, I don't really hear that very often, board the bus. We definitely board an airplane and we can board a train, but maybe not bus. Shekib, is it okay to use the word go after the helping verb going to? Uh, yeah, I am going to go. You can definitely use the verb go after be going to. Yeah, yeah. So, um, let's keep going here. Uh, this is about how long something goes on. Duration. The meeting went on until 3 p.m. Okay, so this is about duration, how long. And again, when it means continue, duration, there is no object. Um, okay. Carry on means to continue something, something that you are doing and the person wants you to keep doing. Okay. So it, example, let me snooze this. I don't think we should carry on this conversation. I'm too upset. Carry on could be replaced with the word continue. I don't think we should continue this conversation. I'm too upset. Okay. Um, I don't know if you know those t-shirts where it says keep calm and carry on. <laughs> um, that is, you know, it means keep calm and keep going, continue with your life. Ismail, I'm not seeing a phrasal verb in your sentence, but it's definitely a very good sentence. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> good. Keep on is very similar to carry on. And there's an expression as well. People say keep on, keeping on. It just means keep going, you know, keep living, don't give up, basically. Um, and yeah, so carry on is, is similar to keep on, okay? So to continue or repeat doing something. Example, 
I thought I fixed the problem, but the car kept on making strange noises. Okay? Kept on, I could say here, carried on. It's okay, both. She keeps on making the same mistakes. Okay? So this would only be using keep on, not carry on, because this is about repeating something. Okay? She keeps on making the same mistakes. Yeah, Ismail teachers will say just carry on. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Student makes a mistake and they stop maybe and teacher says it's okay, just carry on, carry on. Exactly. Karwan, hello, welcome. I will try to help you. Um, feel free to ask questions in the chat. Okay, but today we're talking about phrasal verbs. Uh, Saeed, no object with go on means it doesn't go with carry on example. Um, no, carry on is different. This means to continue. Uh, go on with no object means um, how long for duration. Okay, so for example, the football game went on for hours or um, the the t political debate went on for three hours, for example. It's how long, okay? Whereas continue is carry on, continue. Pays, good sentence, but you do need more uh, grammar tense. Instead of I keep on, I will keep on practicing English. Um, as far as I master. So I think what you mean is I will keep on practicing English until I master it, right? Um, until I master it. Uh, absolutely not, Karwan, sorry. I do not give out uh, my personal information. But the, the YouTube streams are here for you to, to use, okay? So let's keep going. Other phrasal verbs with off. Okay, other phrasal verbs with off, particle off. If we have the verb call with call off, it means to cancel something. And Reb, that's a good sentence. You should keep on practicing until you get better. Perfect sentence. Should is good for advice. Um. I would knife, I would not use phrasal verbs in academic writing, okay? There might be some occasions where you could use some of the more proper phrasal verbs, but generally phrasal verbs are very casual, okay? Um, so it's, they're more in speaking than in academic writing, okay? More casual speaking. If what you want to master is fluency in conversation, in casual, natural conversation, um, then phrasal verbs are very good to um, practice, okay, because we do use them a lot. Rivering got good, but you need past tense, right? They called ED, they called off the meeting. Yep. The game was called off because of bad weather. So here we have past simple passive because we're starting the sentence with the object, the game. So we need our past be verb and our past participle for the phrasal verb. Okay. Uh, let's see. Because it's, it's not necessary to use the, it's more of a general statement. Okay. Um, you could use the because we are obviously being specific about which game and where, but it's kind of optional in this case. Um, you know, if you use the, you might add another prepositional phrase. For example, the game was called off because of the bad weather in Tennessee or something like that. But um, it's more of a general statement and in which case we don't use articles, okay? Pez, don't forget past tense, they called, oh, you corrected yourself, good job, I missed that. They called off 
the press conference. So you do need the in your in your um, example. Saeed, good. The meeting will be called off. Awesome. Um, unfortunately, the couple called off their wedding. Okay, so cancel. Put off, on the other hand, put off means delay, okay, or postpone. Um, for example, the teacher decided to put off doing the test until next week. Um, the teacher decided to put the test off until next week. Okay, that's separable. Um, put off. So if we say the couple put off their wedding, that means that their wedding is still going to happen, but at a later time. Okay. Um, you could say stop putting off the dishes. I want you to do the dishes now. Stop putting it off. Okay. Delaying. Um, kind of like. Mm, procrastination, if you know that word, procrastination. When people procrastinate, they keep putting things off and putting things off and putting things off and pushing them into the future because they don't want to do them, right? Mm -mm -mm. Okay, just checking in with my comments. Lolly, due to the bad weather, we have to put off our picnic. That's a very good, uh, very good example. And let's see what else. Yeah, my articles are pretty tricky, um, but a pretty good rule to remember is that when we are speaking generally, usually we don't use articles, and we make our nouns plural if possible. For example. Tomatoes are delicious. That's just a general statement. But if I'm eating a salad, I could say, wow, the, tom the tomatoes in this salad are delicious. Okay, so when we're being specific, we usually use the and we use um, prepositional phrases to make our nouns more specific. Okay, um, let's see here. Mm -hmm. Shabik, future perfect tense is not that common. No, not so common. It, 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 people use it, but we don't generally speak that way too, too often, okay? Um, you know, like, yeah, it's, it, 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 it's, it's a tense that we do use, but personally, I, I rarely use that tense personally. Um, let's see here, Ismail, the family decided to call off their trip due to unknown circumstances. Very good sentence. Hamuz, the flight was put off because of snow. So in this case you need your be verb past tense because you're starting with the object, the flight, so it's passive voice. Okay, the flight was put off because of snow. Um, Saeed, they put off the flight, take off. Um, I mean, you could say that. They put off the, the take off of the flight as well, maybe. Gertie, my meeting was put off um, because of the coronavirus news. You should say because of or due to. Let's see here. Yes, doing here is optional. It's a gerund and it is optional. Yeah. You could say the, dece the teacher decided to put off the test until next week. Yeah. Michaeli, I usually put off getting up when it is cold. Yes. I, I like to put that off too if I can. <laughs> All right, so take off. I think we've talked about this one before. It's when an airplane leaves the ground, um, but also when a person leaves somewhere. Okay. Um, so, Abdo, I am usually putting off my studies. 
So if you're talking about habit, we should use present tense instead of present continuous. So just, I usually put off my studies. Yeah, I think many people are guilty of that. Ismail, putting off your grammar practice will definitely lead to unpleasant difficulties. Good sentence, very good grammar. And it's true, it's true. So when an airplane leaves the ground, our plane took off uh, three hours late. Okay, um, so that's past tense, good. I could also say, you know, I, I am going to take off in 10 minutes. It means I'm going to leave in 10 minutes, okay? So looking at phrasal verbs with up and down, okay? Some more about physical direction, physical movements. Um, so looking at up, I drop my pen, I need to pick it up. As you can see, it is a pronoun that's going in the middle. We would never say, I need to pick up it. Just pick it up, okay? Hello, Mike Chart in Athens. Nice. Ismail, could take off be replaced with set out in some cases? Yes, it could, but it's, um, it's very kind of uh, medieval, <laughs> a little old school to use set out to mean depart, leave. Um, it's more for like when you're going on a grand adventure, like the, um, the adventurers set out on their trek at 5 p.m. or something. Um, so it is used, but more for like a grand adventure, some kind of big mission, okay? Take off is much more common for everyday situations, okay? So pick it up is because it is referring to my pen. After we mention a noun once, we generally replace it after that with a pronoun, okay? So instead of saying, I need to pick my pen up, it's a little repetitive, we change it to it, okay? And never pick up it, no, because pick up is separable. We can separate it, so we must put the pronoun in the middle. Okay. I'm going to put the clock up on the wall beside the window. Okay, so put up often means for when you're decorating um, the interior of a house, when you're putting up, up art on the wall or p putting up pictures on the wall. Okay, so it's actual physical put up. Um, in this case, the clock is the object which can go in the middle or on the outside. Uh, I'm going to put up the clock on the wall beside the window, okay? Um, mm, I saw takeoff in one word. Um, maybe that was like a, I don't know if it were like in a movie or a movie title or something, something like that, um, but it should be two words. And let's see, Miriam, my class is putting off because I can't travel right now. Um, so Miriam, my class is the object, so you should use um, the passive voice. Uh, and you could say, my class is, um, or I mean, if you're gonna use future, my class is going to be put off because I can't travel right now or my class is being put off is would be the continuous passive but past maybe even my class was put off because i can't travel right now um pez did you confirm take off is a noun let's see oh yeah yeah take off duh <laughs> It can be used as a noun, like um, I had a flight and I, I did not like the takeoff. Okay, so yes, definitely it can be used as a noun, but in what we've been talking about, we've been using it like a verb. 
yeah. So pick up is to lift. Yes, it can mean I need to, you know, pick it up. The action is lifting, okay? But pick up also has a very common meaning, and that's when somebody comes to get you in a car, okay? So for example, if you need someone to drive you to school, you might call your friend and say, you know, hey, could you please pick me up this morning and take me to school? Okay. So yeah, pick up is often for getting a ride. Okay. My mom picked me up at the mall. So that's where she drove to get me. Ismail, you dropped the glass of water, now you have to pick the pieces up. Good. Mustafa, no need to register, you just have to join in every Tuesday at 3 o'clock and you can join our conversation. Yeah. Shabik, phrasal verbs being separable or inseparable is, um, it's a lot of memorization, but also playing around with the phrasal verbs and um, seeing if it if the object can go in the middle um, for example get on is not separable so I cannot say get the bus on I can only say get on the bus okay so it is a lot about just looking through lists and taking notes and making examples and trying to memorize small amounts at a time yeah Let's see, um, Hamuz, I phoned my friend to pick him up from the cinema. I phoned my friend to pick him up from the cinema. Yeah. Um, and yeah, pays pick up means a ride. Like you might call your mom and say, hey, I'm done at soccer, I need a pickup, which would be a noun. If you want to use it as a verb, I need you to pick me up, okay? Um, <laughs> mic chart, right on. It's okay. Mustafa, he moved up to me. Um, that's like a physical movement, yeah. Lolly, I'm going to put my mother's pick on my desk near my computer. Nice. I have one as well near my desk of my, my mother and my sister and myself. Nice to have some family photos at your workspace for sure. Um, uh, let's see. Long. I'm going to pick strawberry in the summer. That's good, but that's just a regular verb pick. No phrasal verb. Shakib. There's no formula besides memorization for that, yeah, yeah. There are lists online where it tells you the phrasal verb and it says separable or inseparable, and that's just, uh, just the way it is, yeah. Good pays, I saw my friend picking his girlfriend up. Long, um, I'm going to pluck strawberries you would want it plural, I-E-S, strawberries, in the summer. Um, yeah, you can, it's the same. You can say pick or pluck because you're taking them off a bush. So, yeah. Pick is probably the most common, I would say. Miriam, I'm going to pick my daughter up from school or I'm going to pick up my daughter from school. Excellent sentence. Good. Um, and then down would be the opposite you know instead of up down <laughs> so for example please put your hands down please put down your hands put down is separable okay um, we don't have any more time for questions could we take that picture down I think it's pretty ugly so remove from the wall remove from the wall right so in this case, that picture is in the middle, and it's okay, so take down is separable, okay? We could also say, could we take down that picture? Hey, Noir, hello. 
What's up? I don't know what your name is, but welcome to the chat. We still got a good 20 minutes left. Um, lie down is again physical direction when you want to just lay on your bed or on the couch and relax, okay? Um, basically this means like take a nap. I think I should lie down for a while, take a nap, short sleep, a rest. Um, and here we have one for um, turn up the volume, okay, here. I love that song, turn it up, turn up the volume. But here, it's the opposite. It's cold in here, turn down the air conditioner. Please turn the air conditioner down, okay? Lizard King, all right, <laughs> I like it. I'll call you Lizard King then. Pick up has plenty of meanings, yes. It's just impossible to go through all of the meanings um, in a one hour stream. So just basically focusing on the meanings that are on SMART here. But yeah, if you think you want to mention a different meaning, feel free, definitely. Pick up does have a lot of meaning, as do a lot of the phrasal verbs. They all have a lot of meanings. Um, Let's see, Gertie, I'm going to lie down because I'm not feeling well. Exactly. Lay down, lie down, no big difference there. No. Tammuz, exactly, take down. If you're saying, can we take that picture down? It's literal, right? It's a literal definition where you literally want to remove something from the wall. Um, but. Take down also has a more idiomatic meaning where we mean defeat, like Hamuz said. You know, like, oh, um, that, that soccer team always beats us. We need to take them down next time. We need to take them down. It means defeat them, beat them. Okay. So, yeah, take down means defeat. It also means physically remove. Nairobi, so cool. I've always wanted to go there. I'm glad you're appreciative. Thank you. It's so nice. Hello, Habib. It's pretty cool, the technology that we can all chat with each other from all over the world. Awesome. I hope I can help you guys a little bit. It's only one hour, so it's not, not that long, but I'm definitely happy to help out if I can. Um, and you know, you try not to be overwhelmed with phrasal verbs because there are so, so many different meanings. Phrasal verbs are, um, they come with experience with the language and talking to native speakers and talking to any English speakers um, and asking questions, okay? When you don't understand what a phrasal verb is, don't just stay quiet, ask, ask what that means, you know? kind of the, it's really an experience part of the language. It comes with experience and just practicing. Lolly, I don't like this music. Please turn down the radio. That's a very good sentence. Miriam, can you turn down the volume? Very good sentence. Yeah, exactly. So we've got, you know, phrasal verbs with up. Go up, come up, walk up, drive up often followed by two, okay? So it's usually about approaching. Um, the man walked up to me and introduced himself, okay? So for example, walked up. If you're going to include me, you do need the extra preposition, but you don't need to me. You can just say the man walked up and introduced himself. Um, Ismail, awesome. I picked up a lot of, so just, um, just one F of phrasal verbs, okay? Two Fs off is literally like on, off, um, or when you're removing something on the table, off the table. But um, in this case, you only need one F. Lizard King, I'd ask to shut it down if I didn't like the music. Yeah, shut it down, for example, or shut it off. We might, it might be more common to use off, shut it off. 
um, shut it down. It's kind of, mm, you know, like a business. I, I didn't want to do my business anymore, so I shut it down. But for music, maybe off is a little better. We use a ton of phrasal verbs, Habib, for sure. So many, for sure. Noir, I picked up a cold from my friend. That's a good sentence, yeah, when you receive a cold from someone. I picked up the French language when I visited Paris. Good, to get to know something. I picked up the bill when we were at the restaurant. Good, that means paying for something. <laughs> good. Well, we already know that you're a higher level, so that's good that you can be here to help others as well. You're like my, my little assistant. <laughs> um, so here, set up, usually to, you know, organize, um, plan a meeting, um, start something. For example, if you get a new, a new computer, you want to go home and set it up right away. Um, if you go camping, you need to set up the tent, okay? Um, if you want two people to be together in love, you might try to set them up on a date, okay? Set them up with each other. Um, if you want to have a meeting, you say, okay, let's set up a meeting. I, we need to speak more about this. Let's set up a time and a day and we can meet again. Okay. <laughs> Lizard King, I'm pretty sure that's a, f I'm not positive, but I think that's a famous skateboarder. Lizard King, skateboarder. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Lizard King is the name of a, of a skateboarder, too. Um, let's see here, some more examples. Long, the bus pulls up, that means the bus stops at the station. Exactly. Pulls up is when a, a bus or a car, any vehicle, drives up to where you are. Okay, so for example, if your mother calls you and says, where should I pick you up? You might say, um, just pull up in front of the school. Okay, so that means drive up. Yep, Ismail, he came up with a new idea. Good. Come up with means to um, think of something. Okay. Uh, Hamuz, we drove up all the night to catch up our friends. So your sentence is good, but it needs a little bit of changing. We drove all night is all you need to say, just a regular verb. We drove all night to catch up with our friends. Hi Mario, welcome. Miriam, that's good. You're using pr um, present perfect passive. So you should say the date has been set up. The nickname of Jim Morrison too, that's cool. I didn't know that, but I really like that musician, so that's nice to know. Set them up means they're made up. Um, no, if you set if you set two people up, you're you're playing matchmaker um, and you're trying to match two people together that you know might might get along well. So people, you know, could say if when they're getting married, oh, we need to thank Julia for setting us up, for example. When you make two people meet each other. Gertie, I have to set up the table before my guests get home. Guests get home. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. Set up the table is very used. We also just say set the table as well. Lolly, that would be awesome. Let's set up a party for Julia's birthday. Nice. We can have a party in the chat close to my birthday. The meeting has already been set up. Good. Present, perfect, simple, passive. Yeah. Michaeli, I need to set up a day to go out with my friends. Excellent sentence. Very important to socialize. 
Um, where did you grow up? Good. This is uh, where someone spent their childhood years. Exam example here. I was born in Toronto, but I grew up in Vancouver. Okay, so if you were born and you grew up in the same place, we often we say born and raised. Okay, um, I was born and raised in Vancouver. Um, let's see. Yeah, Mustafa, if someone asks you where should I put, um, where should I put the groceries? Uh, where should I put the turkey? Can you please put it on the table? Excellent. Um, but we don't need up, just put it on the table. Um, if you want to use up, you would have to put it after it. Can you please put it up on the table? Hamuz, set up the fire to make our dinner. Good. I need to be set up more. This is correct, Saeed, if you say, I need to be more set up. Yeah. Um, so, for example, if I say, oh, he is so set up, he's set up, set up for life. It basically means, you know, like you've got, you know, a good job, good house, and you're taken care of and everything like that. Set up. Um, hello in Poland. We need to set up the auction. Good sentence pays. Noir, I do not teach French. No, I've never taught French. I've studied French though. Pay. So Mike Chart, I was born and raised in Vancouver, British Columbia. Nice. That's awesome. And then you moved to, um, you moved to Greece, right? So that's cool. Uh, so clean up, tidy up, very similar here, these two. Um, clean up is, you know, maybe more like a deep clean with vacuum and, you know, washing the floors and everything like that. Um, whereas tidy up is a little more casual, just making sure everything is in their place, okay? Everything is um, tidy, not necessarily clean, but tidy. Okay. Is male a setup? That would be used like um, it can be used as a noun or a verb. But yes, if you um, if you are set up, um, it means that you like fall into a trap and then the police catch you. Okay. Um, so for example, he he set me up. Uh, he told the police where I would be. He set me up. Yeah. Oh no, the smart channel um, just teaches English, not French. Uh, I have to tidy up my bedroom quickly. My school friends will arrive in 30 minutes. Great sentence, Lolly. Yeah, before I have company over, friends or family, I always try to tidy up my apartment for sure. Miriam, grow up can definitely be used as um, like a, like a, when you're kind of wanting somebody to act more mature, to act more their age. You might say, you know what, grow up. You're acting like a child. Grow up. Yeah, for sure. It's, all, it's used um, in like arguments and that kind of thing. Grow up. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, grown-up students would be an adjective. Grown-up students, adjective. Yeah. Um, so give up means quit. You know, um, I don't like this anymore. I think I'll give up. For example, or I can't get better at snowboarding. I think I'll give up. So to mean to quit. Never give up learning English. That's right. Um, no, Saeed, clean up and tidy up, like I said, clean up is just a little bit more like deep cleaning, um, but also can be for small messes when you spill a drink. You spilled your drink, clean it up, OK? 
okay? So that's a specific mess that you need to clean. Um, whereas tidy up, again, is more just like putting things in their right place, folding your clothing, putting it in the closet, you know, um, maybe a little bit of a, a wipe on the surfaces, dusting a little bit, but yeah, just like a, a small clean. I have to tidy up my house and tie up my tie. <laughs> yeah, that works. Miriam, don't give up on your goals. Yeah, don't give up on your on your goal for sure. Yeah, you definitely obviously want to encourage people not to give up. Gertie, it is so difficult uh, to make a teenager tidy up his or her bedroom. That's true. <laughs> Ray, very good sentence. He had to give up all of his possessions when he failed to pay back his loan. That's good. That would mean um, when it's not about quitting something, but when you have to, when you have to part with something. You know, like, I don't want to give up my freedom, for example. Um, or, please don't make me give up my job, for example. Noir, if I break a cu uh, cup, if, I, if you break a glass cup, you have to clean away the fragments. Um, yeah, I mean, we don't really say clean away, we usually say clean up. And we would say clean up the, the glass. Fragments is very formal. Um, but yeah, clean up the glass, sweep up the glass, wipe up the glass. Um, different verbs can be used. Quit is a regular verb, yeah. Don't give up on yourself, for sure. Good motivation, definitely. Yeah, so here these examples are about quit. We gave up after the other team scored their fifth goal. Uh, or I gave up smoking two years ago, which would mean quit. Okay. So still a few more, um, so many, but we're almost done. We're almost through them. Come up with is to develop something, to think of something, to create something. Um, so, for example, where did you come up with that idea? That's a crazy idea. Um, we need to come up with a plan. Okay. Um, mm, 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 let's see. <laughs> yes, thanks, Shakib. I try. Sorry if I miss anyone. But yeah, it's definitely good not to give up. Never give up, right? Give up and give in. Give up is when you stop trying. Give in is when you um, stop trying to fight something. You know, like if someone wants you to go to a party with them and you say, no, 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 no but they keep asking you and keep asking you and keep asking you until finally you give in and you go to the party. Yeah. So yeah, or if you're, you know, you're trying to eat healthy food and you fight the junk food, you don't you don't want the chocolate, you don't want the chocolate, but finally you give in and you eat the chocolate. Yeah. Michaeli, I have given given up on social media promising that I've been trying to learn more about that. so that sentence is good. You should say, I have given up, um, I have given up social media. Instead of saying on social media application, just say, um, I have given up on social media. Um, but if you say for about two years, then you should use a different verb and say, I have not 
used social media for about two years and since then I've been trying to learn more about myself present perfect is a good good tense to use yeah but the first part of your sentence because you're saying for about two years um, you should just say I have not used social media for about two years yeah yeah hurry up hurry up speed increase your speed hurry up mm -hmm. good Miriam she came up with a plan lizard king give in to love give in to love yeah don't fight the love give in to the love yeah That's correct, Raby. After didn't, always your second, your main verb is in the base form. That's correct. Yeah. Didn't is what makes it, um, you know, past tense. Didn't. Even if it's present tense, I don't, uh, she, she doesn't see him, for example. Um, he doesn't want to go. So yeah, always base verb after negative, present and past. Lolly, will you be able to come up with the money by the end of the week? Good sentence. Thank you, Mustafa. That's a very nice compliment. I appreciate it. Hamuz, lazy people always come up with lies. Okay, don't forget with. Um, lazy people come up with lies to uh, give up to failure. Um, maybe you mean lazy people always come up with lies um, in order to give in to failure, maybe? Or lazy people always come up with lies to give up, or excuses to give up is probably what you mean. Lazy people always come up with excuses to give up. Gertie, you. I, is that true? That's crazy. I gave up scuba diving because the last time I went, I saw a shark very close to me. That's very scary. Ooh, that's my fear. Miriam, my boyfriend and I broke up. Yeah. If that's true, sorry to hear that. Hopefully for the better. Um... The government set up a deal with the opposition leaders. Good. So don't forget, the government set up a deal with the opposition leaders. Okay. <laughs> no worries, Lizard King. It's all good. Lolly, lolly. Okay. Sounds like then you you both made the right decision for yourselves. Yeah, always tough, though, to go through a breakup. Um, so, yes, let's see here. We're out of time for today, um, but we did, we did make, make it through most of, the, um, most of the phrasal verbs, okay? There are a lot, of course, and I don't want to overwhelm you guys with the phrasal verbs. Um, we didn't really get to the document today, but what I'll do is I'll put it in the chat anyways, okay? Um, and if you see here, this is just a continuation review from last week. You can look it over if you were not here last week. Um, and then, you know, for uh, homework, <laughs> you can have some homework this week. These phrasal verbs, um, there are nine of them. Okay, well, eight of them, but two meanings for, for this. Try to think of what they could mean, find the definition, um, and then with this task, you can try to place the correct phrasal verb in each sentence, okay? So I will go over this next week with you guys. All right, so feel free to um, complete the sentences and next week we will go over the answers to the sentences okay so I'll share this with you guys
and it will be in the chat. So there you go. And yeah, I will see you guys next week. And just a reminder, next week I will go over those sentences with you guys just for the first 10 minutes or so. And then I'm going back to unit one in this intermediate level of SMART. Um, I'm starting back at unit one and we're going to do mostly exercises together, okay? So you can feel free to ask questions in the chat, but um, I'm going back to unit one and we're gonna focus more on spending the time doing exercises. So less lecturing and more exercises, um, but yeah, just basically an hour to practice your English and do some exercises with me, all right? So thanks for coming, guys. Thanks for all being very positive and kind. And yeah, never give up. <laughs> we'll see you next week. Bye, guys.